Hey guys, welcome back to another video. If you're new here, my name is Shivan and I'm a second year, no, I'm a third year medical student studying at King's College London. And uh, today, in this video, I'm going to be talking to you about the training pathway after you get out of medical school to become a doctor in the UK. So, we're going to go through all the different options, all the things you have to do, all the things you can do. But before we do that, I want you to go check out my YouTube channel because I make videos about medical school and university. And if you are interested in that stuff, definitely check it out. I have day in the life videos, videos about medical school, how to get into medical school, all of that. So if that's something you're into, check it out and smash that subscribe button. Anyway, so back to this video. So like I said, today we're going to discuss the different training pathways and I'm going to do that by get graphically showing it to you by drawing diagrams and stuff on this iPad and throwing it up on the screen. So hopefully it's useful, hopefully it's easy to understand and let's not delay it further and get right into it. This journey, as we all know, it starts in medical school. Yeah, so that's five to six years. Sorry for my terrible handwriting. And after that, everybody has to do one thing. They go into the foundation program. The foundation program in turn is two years. Foundation year one and foundation year two. And in each year, you cover three different blocks of three different chosen specialties or three different areas of medicine that you want to explore or look into. After foundation year one and foundation year two comes the choice of what you want to do now. So there are three different types of training pathways. After your foundation program, you have run through programs, you have uncoupled programs, and you have um, what is it? Acute care common stem. So let's just delineate the three of these. So run through programs are when you decide your specialty, what you want to do immediately after your foundation program and you basically want to get right into it. So run through programs are available for specific specialties such as cardiothoracic surgery, clinical radiology, things like this. And I don't remember all of them, so I'll throw them up on the screen. A involved going directly into specialty training. So S, okay. Um, SD1, specialty training year one, SD2, and then like on from the SD, let's say maybe for radiology, SD3 to 5. And after that, you become, oh, there's no space here. After that, you become. A consultant which is the final goal in an uncoupled program is slightly different here you have to make only a very simple choice early on you have to decide between core medical training and core surgical training and here you have to complete CT 1 to 3 that's 2 or 3 years and CST 1 to 3. So, yeah. And after that, you start off from a specialty training year according to how many co training years you've done. So, if you've done three years of co training, you start from SD4 and maybe go up till SD8. Similar, it's similar for surgery. That's usually how many years there are of specialty training. And then, obviously, in both cases, you become a consultant. Final goal achieved. And the third one is acute care common stem. As we said earlier, acute care common stem, that's something that you have to do if you want to practice emergency medicine and it's something you can look into if you want to do acute internal medicine or general internal medicine as well or anesthesiology here you basically have to do internal medicine training years one to three after which you start your sd training 
say SD4 to how many of yours there are for that particular program after which again consultant right so those are all the specialty training programs available in the UK but now there's one more thing you can do when you get out of medical school and after you complete your foundation program and let's go through that so that's becoming a GP so if you're becoming a GP you obviously do foundation year one you do foundation year two and then you go straight into GP specialty training so GP SD1 and then SD2 SD3 it's only three years after which you become a GP and you receive your CCT which is your completion certificate of training or tra certificate of completion of training something I don't remember the exact name and yeah uh, following all that you become a GP so that doesn't take a very long time one big concern when you're thinking about medical training is how old am I going to be at every stage am I only going to become a fully qualified doctor by the time I'm 40 50 when, when is it going to happen so let's just discuss ages throughout this pathway and what what, what that kind of looks like so let's go back to the first page and let's see at the end of the at the end of medical school you're 24 years so most people I'd say are on are between 23 to 25 on average some people are maybe older some people may be younger although I don't think that's very common um, so suppose you're 24 let's take that as the age you'll be 26 by the end of the foundation program by the end of the run-through program, suppose it has five specialty training years like radiology, you'd be 32 and a consultant. At the end of the uncoupled program, which has 10 years of training, 10 years? Yeah, 10, 10 years of training, you'd technically be 34. But for many specialties, you need to do an MD or a PhD to be competitive for a position as consultant. So, I really say you'd be somewhere between 35 and 37 as a consultant in doing the young couple program. In acute care common STEM, it's it's similar, similar to the other two, something around that, your mid 30s. As a GP, now that's where it's very different. A GP just has to train for five years after medical school before they become a fully qualified GP. They can specialize further, but just the full qualification as a GP specialist would take five years. So suppose you're 24 and you start, or even 23 or 25, the range would be 28 to 30 years old as a GP. Now that's very young, so the GP training is quite short. So those are the different ages that you'd be after medical school. Before we end the video, I need to return to one important part of the entire training pathway, and that's the foundation program, which is what happens immediately after you get out of medical school. So, the foundation program, everyone has to apply to it. And basically what you do is you choose deaneries that you want to apply to. There are 20 different deaneries in the UK. They're usually covering regions, but there are three different deaneries in London, which are quite competitive. So you want to choose the deanery you want to apply to, and that includes several different hospitals, a large area. And then you get the allocated a deanery depending on your FBAR score, your foundation program application score. And that involves many different things, many different exams, your educational performance, stuff like that. If you get allocated the deanery of your choice or whatever deanery you get allocated includes a list of jobs. So you get given lots of jobs and they're basically different specialties and different sequences and maybe in different hospitals and stuff like that. And then you have to basically choose the ones that you prefer over the ones that you don't. And then you get, you obviously get allocated to a certain set of jobs. And that's, that's how your foundation program jobs are determined. So if you want the jobs that you prefer or if you want the choices to be in your hands, you have to get the best score possible so that they 
uh, give you your preferences. You can also apply to the academic foundation program, which is good if you're interested in research or teaching. That involves a specific block in which you can participate in academic stuff like research. And uh, yeah, that's, that's just one option, but it's competitive, so start looking into it early. Right, so I think that covers everything I have to say about medical school training in the UK. And um, I don't think there's anything that I've missed out that I know. I know I'm not an expert on this, but I am a medical student in the UK and I have done my research. So this is what I've come to understand and that's why I'm sharing it with you. Definitely cross check the important information on websites. I'll link some down below. And uh, I hope you found the video useful if you're looking to go to medical school in the UK. And even if you're a current medical student or anything like that, if it's relevant to you, I hope it was helpful. And if it was, do drop a like on this video. Do smash that subscribe button. Yeah, leave any comments or any questions or anything like that down below if you feel like it or if you have any burning questions. And I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Share the video with your friends uh, who may be in medical school, going to medical school. If you know this will help them. And with that, I will see you in the next one.